Why does CPU need caches? How layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3 caches working together? But most importantly, how can you write cache-friendly codes in order to use the most out of the CPU and caches in general? Then this is the video for you. In the last video, we learned how virtual memory works and how page faults can slow down your code and how you can manage your memory in order to avoid any use of swaps instead of RAMs. But there is an even bigger factor here. Even if you have the latest processor with the fastest RAM possible and still your program is slow, it means that you are not using the benefit of using cache. To understand why caching is important, let's have a look to see how CPU and memories evolved over the time. Over the past few decades, CPU speeds increased dramatically, doubling roughly every 18 months, which is famous as the name of Moore's law. However, memory RAM has not kept up. It is still much slower than processor itself. This mismatch creates the huge bottleneck between the performance of the RAM and CPU. This is called memory latency problem. For example, a typical instruction for CPU takes one nanosecond to execute, but the CPU has to fetch data from the RAM. It could take up to 100 nanoseconds or even more. That's like a formula car stopping for every traffic light. It completely kills the performance. To solve this, processors use caches, a small ultra-fast memory banks inside the CPU that is so recently access data. So for the CPU, instead of going all the way down to the RAM in order to fetch the data, it looks first into the cache in order to find the data if it's already there. Modern CPUs, they don't have only one layer of cache. They have hierarchy of the caches. The three main levels are layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. For layer 1, which is the smallest and fastest layer of the cache, it is located directly inside each CPU core, making it extremely quick to access. The typical size of layer 1 cache is 32 kilobytes to 128 kilobytes and layer one cache sizes are basically for each core in case of having two cores or eight cores you have two or eight number of layer ones every time cpu needs data it looks into the layer one cache if the data is there it fetches the data directly from layer one which we call it cache hit and the cpu gets the data instantly within a few nanoseconds. If the data isn't in layer one, it moves to the layer two to find it out. Layer two is larger than layer one, but it is also slower than layer one. The typical sizes for layer two is from 256 kilobytes to one megabytes per CPU core. It acts as a middle ground between layer one and RAM, and it stores the frequently accessed data which couldn't be fit on layer one. So in the case of the CPU not finding a data in layer one, it looks to the layer two, and even in layer two, it can fetch the data when the data is available within 100 nanoseconds. It's still fast, but not as fast as layer one. If the CPU cannot find the data in layer two, it goes to the layer three. Layer three is much larger than other two layers, ranging from four megabytes to 64 megabytes, depending on which year you are currently watching the video, of course. But layer three is slower than layer two and layer one. And the another point of layer three is that unlike layer one and layer two, which we have it per core in the CPU, layer three is shared between all the cores in CPU. If the CPU cannot find data in layer one and layer two, it looks into the layer three to find it before going to the RAM to fetch the data. But what happens if the data even is not in layer three? Then in that case, CPU needs to go all the way down to the RAM in order to fetch data, which is 100 times slower. Whenever CPU cannot find data in all this layer of caches and it needs to go to the RAM, we call it cache miss. And cache misses are the major problem that slow down our program when we program something. There are several types of cache misses. Cold miss is when the data is not already fetched into the cache. It's the first time CPU tries to fetch data, so it has not yet been cached before. There's also capacity miss. When the data is larger than the cache capacity, the new data needs to be replaced by the old data in the cache, and we call it capacity miss. There is also conflict miss. In the case of two pieces of data mapped to the same location in the cache, it causes one of them to be evicted from the cache. The more cache misses that your program has, the slower it will be. So how do we fix this? In those cases, we need to optimize our program for the cache, which we can call it cache optimization. The first technique that we would like to investigate using 
sequential memory access or basically avoiding a stride access as we know from the previous video accessing data sequentially would be much faster than accessing data randomly is because of cpu prefetching which loads adjacent memory locations into the cache let's compare two examples you have two for loops here which one do you think is using bad access you can pause the video to just look it for yourself in this example on the left side as you can see in the for loop it is escaping memory locations which causes cache misses but on the right side we have the for loop which goes through the data sequentially and it helps cpu to use prefetch data in order to process it faster another technique is using data structures that can fit into the cache if you use for example a small cache friendly structs instead of large scattered objects that improves the performance of your program especially if your data structure is small enough to be fitted into the layer 1 and layer 2 you can recognize the difference of the performance in your program in this example the struct cache friendly has one integer data for the id and the array itself has the size of 32 which can be fit into the cache so what do we learn in this episode in this episode although the length of episode is small but it's one of the important aspect of the memory hierarchy that you can benefit when you are programming something so you learn layer one layer two and layer three store frequently data in order to speed of cpu access you learn also cache misses slow down your program and minimizing them it's a key to improve the performance of your program you also learn to write cache friendly code in order to boost the performance of your program in the next episode we will discuss about the numa non-uniform memory access and how memory behaves in multi-core systems if you enjoy this don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below until the next episode good morning good afternoon and good evening bye